right, homework practices are arrays using multiplication. Okay. The first one is done for us. The second one, I see that this is a stick. Each of these are one. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the problem that I am solving is 10 times 8. And I know some of us know our math fact for it, but it's good to use those strategies so that we know that it's working. Well, here I have a 10th 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. So I can group all of that together and say that it is 80. And so my area is 80 square units. We need to make sure area has that square in it. Okay. Letter B, I have another 10. So my equation that I'm solving is 10 times 7. And we're just counting by 7s, or as we've talked about with our place value, when I multiply by 10, I can look at the numbers. 1 times 7 is 7. And then add that 0 on to bump it up that place value to the 10s place. So this area is 70 square units. And our third one, I have a 10 and 3 once. So this big number is going to be 13. And on this side, I have a 10. So my equation is 13 times 10. And let's look at the area model. I have a 10 by 10. That's a 100 grid in there. So I can fill in a 100 there. And then I have 10, 20, 30 there. So to use my area model to solve the equation, I would know that 13 times 10 is the same thing as 100 plus 30, which is 130. And we can check what we know about our place value. 10 is an extended fact. So 13 times 1 is 13. And then we add that 0 back in to bump it up to the place value. So the area of this one is 130 square units. The idea with that area model is to break it up into smaller chunks so we're not big numbers. And multiplying by 10 is a good practice for our extended facts and our area models. All right, our story problems. James has 12 dimes in his pocket. How much money does he have? Well, a dime worth 10 cents. I have 12 dimes, and they're each worth 10 cents. Okay, we could draw the area model, or we're going to work on those extended facts for the back. I have 12 times 1 is 12, and 1 zero to put back in. So I have 120 cents, or $1.20. So B, Larry had 16 dimes in his collection of old coins. Coin. So we're going to do 16 times 10, and we're going to end up with 160, or $1.60. Letter C, your story could vary, but somehow you need to have 30 dimes somewhere in your story. Who has them and where they got them, that's up to you. And letter D, same thing, somewhere you need to have 21 dimes because that's where we get that for both those problems. And number three, our challenge. Dana has only nickels in her hand, and Dejai has exactly the same number of dimes and no other coins. Together, they have a total of 90 cents. How many coins is each person holding? Okay. I think I'm going to make a T-chart for this one. I'm going to have Dana total. And I know that they have nickels has, is Dana, dimes is Ajay, and they have exactly the same number of dimes. So if Dana has one dime, she's got five cents, and he would have one dime, which would give me 15 cents. Okay, that's pretty far away from that 90, so I'm going to double it. 
So if she has then has ten cents, so two nickels and two dimes, I'm gonna get thirty cents. It's still pretty far away, so I'm gonna double it again. We have twenty cents in nickels, so that's four nickels. I'll put in parentheses four here. And forty cents in dimes. And then now I have sixty cents. I'm noticing something here, and we've been talking about ratio tables in class. If I take 30 and 60 and put them together, I'm going to get that total of 90 cents, won't I? So then if I take my number of dimes, I would have 60 cents in dimes and 30 cents in nickels. Well, I'm going to look at the dimes to solve it. 60 cents in dimes means that I have 6 dimes. and six nickels. Okay. If you're just checking your work, then we'll go back through. On the front. And the back. 